Okay, guys, welcome back to me raging over this guy's straw manning and bullshit in this video that he did that's over 48 minutes long that I've only gotten 11 minutes through. Let's just get on with it so that way I don't blow my fucking brains out, I guess. The fuck? I don't... You do realize that, you know, the Jedi were kind of like not rebels. They were like the status quo. I mean, I don't I don't get that analogy. I mean, honestly, I think that's just a slip of his tongue. Like, I think that's a genuine mistake. Like, uh, the rebellion, a Jedi and the Rebellion are the same thing, even though most of the people in the Rebellion aren't Jedi and have no plans to be. So that's like, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get that, like, like, if someone could hit me up with someone who actually understand that, like, do that, please. Just like, I had, I had no fucking clue what the fuck he was talking about there. <laughs> Not, it, it all matters. Yeah, going to a uh, planet to virtue signal about the virtues of anti-capitalism and not freeing a bunch of slave kids who have force powers and could be very influential in events moving forward. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it also adds nothing to the plot because that plot was so un was so contrived and unnecessary because of the everything that Holdo had planned out beforehand. Oh yeah, I bet that mattered. It added nothing to the story. It was just something for Finn to do, and it, it could have been a character. The only way that plotline would have worked is if it actually showed Finn like actual details about morality, and it didn't do that. And you know, that whole sequence with Cancel Bite did not matter in the slightest. And that whole sequence with Paige, you know, sacrificing herself, as he just said there. That was worth something. It was showing, it was, you know, it was showing everything detailed about sacrifice. And then, and there was something that Poe witnessed. And then he decided not to sacrifice himself when it came to the final battle. What the fuck are you saying, dude? That was not why she risked her life. Are you kidding me? Like, if it wasn't for that whole thing with the, you know, the grab-ass explanation of, oh, they can track us through hyperspace without having a tracker on board, that whole sequence with Canto Bite would have never happened, right? I still think, I still think that whole thing with the fucking, uh, tracking people through hyperspace is a grab ass is something that is absolutely full of grab assing like that was just that was just a grab ass attempt to put some drama in the situation Paige never knew anything about it okay if it was actually something established and then you know if the it's like if the initial battle took place at the middle of the film and Paige actually sacrificed herself and like you know this was like a you know a plan like this was something that was planned out between everybody from the lower people to the higher ups that would have been a much more believable sequence of events. Like, everything would have actually flowed a hell of a lot better in the movie. It's like, okay, they can track us through hyperspace now. What are we going to do? It's like, okay, we have this fleet. Let's go take out these guys. We'll give you a window to escape. Because, you know, the First Order is, like, on our ass. And we can't shake them. So we're going to have to battle them for a while until you, until we leave, until you leave. And then we could have, like, you know... Some callbacks to Empire, but having an, you know, like an original space battle, like, you know, it was like actually like, you know, fleet against fleet. And then like having, the, and then, you know, have like the uh, resistance fleet getting wiped out, but still holding their own to a certain degree while the First Order is still, you know, kicking ass and have things happen in a believable standpoint. But that's not what happens. Paige didn't sacrifice herself knowing that Rose was going to do this thing and then hand over a resistance ring to a kid that we'd never seen or heard about who she doesn't even take with her so that the thing that they were going to do to get the code breaker so that way they could, you know, 
fix all that stuff. It, but that doesn't. But then he doesn't do the thing because you know the first order kind of because you know they kind of fucked it up. Like I, I mean, like the guys at Red Letter Media said, it just led to nothing. It didn't lead anywhere. It led nowhere. It, despite the message that it seems to be portraying, which I still think was a, not only a very misguided message, it was very it was told really dumb. The new future resistance. So, are you telling me this new movie's gonna, the new uh, Star Wars movie episode nine is going to take place like twenty years on? These kids are kids. They're not going to like unless they have the dumb luck that Anakin had in the prequels, where he jumped into a starfighter and managed to accidentally crash himself inside of the big bad guy ship and managed to blow it all up. Unless they get that kind of luck, hell no. Okay, the only way they would actually be able to be a part of this is if this takes place at least a dec. The next movie takes at least a decade after this. All right, this also goes into the world building problem of why the hell are these people called the resistance if they were the status quo and stuff like that? What are they resisting? Why call them the resistance? And I still think that that name was kind of done in political turmoil, terminology, blah, blah, terminology because you know. Politics is everywhere now, but still, this is a massive world building problems, and you cannot ignore that they aren't there. You can't ignore that they're not there. You can't say they're not there. They are there. The Last Jedi, and by extension, The Force Awakens, both have some massive world building problems because we don't know anything. And don't tell me, oh, they're gonna tell us on a book. I will not. I am not going to buy separate books for 20 bucks a pop 10 at the least I'm not gonna buy that much I'm not gonna buy books that frequently okay I barely have time to play games anymore as it is or to watch movies I haven't been able to watch consistently sit down and watch a movie in one sitting in a couple months all right because of school and shit like it's been kind of crazy and hectic for me because of work and school Okay, so if you don't give us the basis of the, the basic world building that most stories need in order to function, why even bother putting it in the books? If you're not going to give us to us to people where most people are going to get it immediately, and where most people get that source of information, which is in the movies, then why bother baking the books? And I know that's kind of going off on a tangent, that's not exactly this guy's fault, but still... His entire argument runs into the world building problem, and I think it needs to be addressed just how bad the world building is in the new sequel in the sequel trilogy. Yes, the film was good to look at because you know it's the most one. It was, well. Until Solo came around, it was the most expensive Star Wars movie to date, and you know they had a lot of money to throw around because Lucasfilm has a lot of money to throw around. Man, Star Wars is one of the biggest intellectual properties ever. Of course, it's going to have fantastic visuals. That's what you know George and his team did when they created Star Wars. They did good with props and shit. And while it does look good visually, and the mixture of practical and CGI effects shots are great. Some of the, the, the shot the shots are going to age over time, unlike the ones from the OT where you had real props. And yeah, some of them don't look as good as they do now, especially compared to other things. But honestly, I still think that the practical effects from the original trilogy are timeless. And since they are real props, they just look and feel a hell of a lot better than the fake crap that we got in so many movies nowadays, including the Star Wars prequels and the sequel trilogy. Well, the in-development sequel trilogy, per se. But that, that was just a my, minute little problem there.
Okay, I do not understand this whole bullcrap, okay? It may connect with you on a spiritual level. I'm not going to take that away from you, but... You were just going to deny how that subplot made no sense. That, it, that, sub, that entire subplot with, you know, the kids and Rose and Finn... It didn't add anything to the overall the overall story. They didn't interconnect with the main plot. If the kids came with, and then you actually see that stuff towards the end of the movie, I would have been much more enthused with that. But one of the things is it was just too much, way too fast. All of a sudden that the ki all of a sudden the kids who, you know, are probably getting the shit kicked out of them because Rose and Finn didn't take them along with them off the planet to go with the resistance to, uh, you know, be free. I still do not understand why he is not acknowledging the fact that Rose and Finn just left him there so they can get whippings for all eternity. Logic, people! But still, it's still under... It, it, it's like, seriously, JJ might not... He, he's still not acknowledging the fact that JJ might not even come back to these kids. JJ might not come back to these kids in episodes in episode nine. All right, and judging by from what I've seen, with you no know, Luke Skywalker and Carrie Fisher well not, and Carrie Fisher Leia coming back for episode nine, whether Luke be a Force Ghost or whatever, it seems like they're kind of straying away from what Ryan did. Now, a good way to have actually you know set it up to where they could stay in the plot regardless of your involvement was you know actually keeping them in the plot actually making them a bigger part of the story other than being some really retarded attempt to be you know bashing on corporate idealism and capitalism despite being you know being one of the biggest intellectual properties of all time that rakes in millions of billions of dollars every fucking year you know, just there for virtue signaling along with, you know, animal rights and crap. You know, animal rights is a good thing, but in a Star Wars movie, it doesn't fit because, if you you know, technology is a hell of a lot more advanced than it is now. You know, animal cruelty is kind of on the down low in most areas now. So why would we even dis be discussing that in the future and stuff like that? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, these kids were there... Solely for Ryan to virtue signal about. They were not there for the story. They were there so Ryan could spread from to, like Mahler said, spread virtues across the screen. That was basically the only reason they were in the film. They were there to spread virtues across the screen. Despite, and if you like that message, fine, more power to you. I don't care. But to say that that was a big part of the film, like, Thematic, not only thematically, but also storyline-wise, that that was such a major part of the film. That is an outright fabrication because they do they have so little to do with the main plot. They are only in the film for maybe a total of two minutes. And the ending shot of the kid holding up his broom and you know picking up his broom with a force, you know, without any training. Despite the fact that you know when we saw Luke using the force for the first time in Empire, on the freaking you know lightsaber in the snow trying to pull it out when the you know the the snow beast was about to attack him you know it took a lot of effort to try to get it out come on guys pay attention to detail Okay, those are some cherry-picked examples because most of those 
Except the amazing Lucas, who was the guy who was saying fuck everybody who likes the film, kind of doing like an ER thing, only ER, that is ER shtick. I don't think they made, this is the amazing Lucas' shtick, because I don't know who the hell this guy is, I've never heard of him, so blah blah blah, but most of those guys are just like, just expressing their honest opinions about the film, they're just like, this isn't a good Star Wars movie. That's what they felt about the film. And he's mixing it in with this amazing Lucas guy who is saying, fuck you, fuck your wife, fuck your kids, fuck your movie, blah, blah, blah. You know, emotion over logic. Most of those guys and, you know, what he was saying right here were logical opinions. They were just like, we, I just don't like this film. This, this film is, they're like, this film is utter garbage and stuff like that. How is that the same as saying, go fuck yourself? Are you kidding me? What a disingenuous douchebag. I mean, for the love of God. Yeah, the amazing Lucas. Not a great guy. I can agree with you based on this clip. Though, I might have to look this up even more later to see if he, you know, apologized and stuff. Because if he did apologize and stuff, then there's once again a cherry-picked example. Most of these guys up here are just like, what the fuck? They're just like, they're just giving their honest opinions about a movie. People are entitled entitled to their opinions. To say that they're not, it's not only disingenuous, it's just downright stupid when it comes to internet co conversations. Everybody has a right to their own opinion, especially on the internet. And to just say that it's not when it comes to Star Wars? I mean, are you fucking stupid? Are you kidding me? I mean, come on. I'm not trying to say fuck you if you like the film or not. I'm just trying to have an open, honest debate. And I'm criticizing this guy, Major Lee, here, because he doesn't seem to want that. He just wants to, you know, straw man every viewpoint out of existence. So the, like, just straw manning every viewpoint that the people who didn't like this film had. And then construing them as the mainstream media has with the people who are, you know, calling Mel Kelly Marie Tran a bunch of racist, sl racist slurs and stuff like that. Or the people who drove uh, Daisy Ridley off of Instagram and stuff like that. The people who are actually being really bad people. Okay? Now, I do not like toxic people in fandom either. I think toxic people in fandom are overall just a pretty big cancer that needs to be dealt with in some kind of way. And that we all need to have a discussion to figure out how to push these people out of the modern conversation. Or at least not give them such a big voice that they have. Because, you know, one of the big, big things that I've noticed is, you know, vocal minorities always get their voices heard a lot more no matter really what the situation and blah 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 but what major lee's doing right here yeah how in the hell does this have a nearly 50 50 like and dislike ratio when you're when you've been when this 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 this, this little clip right here is encapsulating just why people do not like people who defend this film with such fervor that is, that is really what, this really, the, I, honestly, the point I've been trying, I was going to get with this whole thing was that this guy's video, this 48 minute video, encapsulates everything that is wrong with the defense of Star Wars The Last Jedi. They, alright, like, alright, out of the people who, Defend it wrong, you know. Those minor, that minority who is a complete, uh, who are complete utter morons. Right, the film. It has some high points, but to me, it just doesn't. Not only doesn't feel like a Star Wars movie, it just doesn't fit with the entirety of the Star Wars saga. All right, and, and objectively, I'm not wrong about that. But according to this guy, everything you say is wrong because you're just a either a a close-minded fanboy. B, you're so fucking stupid because, you know, you didn't like the film because of your dog shit theories that were taken out of consideration because uh, Ryan Johnson is some masterful genius and that everything he says about you is uh, completely justified based on absolutely nothing you've done. So it's just like, you wonder why I'm going to continue to respond to this until I'm completely done with this video? Because of shit like this. Because of this disingenuous bullshit. 
that keeps just going out of his he just keeps going out of his way to show just how much of not only a prick he is but why so many people do not like the film and why people don't like Ryan Johnson as a person why people don't like the many people who have defended it the way they have it's because they are not actually trying to have an open open and honest debate they are straw man points taking things out of context making people on the other side look like the bad guy because some people didn't like my movie that's it Okay, okay. It's time to debunk this point once and for all. That you know, being so being really rageful about something means you're on the path to darkness, or something like that, or that that the that you know your argument against this movie is invalid just because you are such a uh, hateful person or you've been really so angry about it that it clouds your judgment. That is complete and utter bullshit. As I say, all right, and I'm not the greatest person when it comes to conveying this type of mindset, but I tend to get pretty, you know, uh, I, I tend to speak better when I'm angry. I kind of like a reverse Hulk in that sense, where like, you know, the Hulk doesn't actually, you know, he, when he's regular Bruce Banner, he doesn't, you know, he's not really trying to heed the violence. He's very, you know, you know, just being a dude, he's just, he, and he's super smart and stuff like that, I'm kind of reversed in that aspect. When I'm calm, I'm not generally trying to think about things. That's not really my shtick. It's not really for me, really. It's just, I'm just, you know, I'm no, just a guy. I'm just your average Joe. But when I get angry, I tend to get my point straight for the most part. I mean, I'm not great at it. And there are dozens of other examples like Mahler or ER who can do the rage, but concise thing a hell of a lot better than I can. But to say that because you are so hateful that it that it makes you evil because you didn't like a movie, that's really stupid. I bet, alright, I mean, have you guys ever heard of Plinkett's Reviews? I mean, honestly, has this guy never heard of Harry S. Plinkett? Harry S. Plinkett took down the Star Wars prequels for what they were because he didn't like them, because he hated them with a fiery, burning passion. All right, and he did it in not, not only a concise way, it it built red-letter media. It made red-letter media. Okay, I know Harry S. Plinkett isn't an actual dude. It's a comic skit, I know, and all that stuff. Don't get pissy about it in the comments if... This gets over 20 views, but still, you know, the guys at Red Letter Media really didn't like the prequels, and they had good reason for it, and they were not only very vocal about it, they had, they, they were not only vocal about it, they were very concise in their constructive arguments, All right? And now, honestly, I wish I could attain that level of awesomeness, because, no, I'm just, but, I, you know, I'm just a guy, a 19-year-old who records shit on his phone and uh, only does this whenever he has the opportunity to be alone in his house in order to record shit on his phone and has no time to write scripts so he goes based off of what is in his head and tries to look up stuff in order to you know support his viewpoint which most of the time can be supported without that stuff, but I still need to do it in order to be genuinely concise. But I'm not the most concise person when it comes to this stuff, right? And not a lot of people with the rage aren't really concise, but like I said, there are a lot of people who are very angry with this movie and have been have, and have had really good, you know, concise opinions about it. Like they can still be pissed off, they can still, you know, have their opinion and have it be in detail. To say that you cannot have a good opinion in detail because you were mad at something is absolutely, profoundly idiotic.